Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? We will start in five minutes or six minutes to be exact, inshallah. Tune in, say salam, where you're from. And let's get our salams going on. Get that salam going on. Salam's going on. Fatima Sheikh Hansen, wa alaikum as -salam. Fatima's in the Netherlands, land of bicycles. Who else? Salams, where are you from? Noreen Adnan is answering the riddle. Um, no, time is not the answer that I have for that riddle. It's more fun when you guess, right? Some people, they just Google it. And what's the point of that? Salams, where are you from? Where are you tuning in from? That's nice. Noorin from Dhaka. Wa alaikum as -salam. Thanks for tuning in every day, Noorin. Noreen Adnan. Wa alaikum as -salam. Sana Silat Warasal Sarwala in San Antonio, Alaikum Asalaam. Asma, Alaikum Asalaam, Asma. Hope you're feeling better. Mrs. Khan in Chicago, Alaikum Asalaam. Rahila, Alaikum Asalaam. Noreen Slow and Sharifa, Alaikum Asalaam. It was funny yesterday, a brother was saying, Oh, I only say salam to the sisters. And it was funny because <laughs> there's only sisters saying salam. And I had uh, said salam to him. Who we got? Michelle Omusa uh, from the Netherlands, but uh, from Birmingham in Mother. We got Maria from the Kingdom. Good morning, Vietnam. Al Medina in Bosnia. Wa alaikum as salam. Kul Thuma Begum minus. I think you're trying to say salam. Yamama. Wa alaikum as salam, Yamama. Is Nadir there today? Zahra. In Mississauga, wa alaikum as salam. Mi'raj, salam from Mi'raj, Rayyan, Isra, Mahira, Nabiha, and Nazia. Wa alaikum as salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nila, Ruja, salam brother. I'm Rujahim from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Wa alaikum as salam brother. I've been to Colombo. Allah keep everybody safe. Noreen says, I can't sit still when there's a riddle to solve. Ha, ha. Talat Nahid, wa alaikum as -salam. Rabina, wa alaikum as -salam. Michelle says, please make dua. SubhanAllah. Please make dua for my dad, not Muslim, few minutes from, few moments from dying. SubhanAllah. Are you with him? Munir, and, and thank you for coming on and sharing with us, sister. I will tag you so everybody can. Munira, wa alaikum as -salam. Rahila, what's the riddle? The riddle is in the text. The more you take of me, the more you leave behind. What am I? We're going to get started at the top of the hour. Aisha, Arif, wa alaikum as -salam. Patricia, Rajab, in Philadelphia, wa alaikum as -salam. As Matt says, after nine days, I managed to make some chicken broth today. Alhamdulillah. Nubera, wa alaikum as -salam. Um Ifa, and salam to your eight-year-old daughter. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Ishal, it's not Ishal. 
uh, so can you phonetically spell it so I can pronounce it properly, inshallah? King Dawer says, what is the topic today? It's about overloading your brain, how to unload your mind. Nadim is not talking to me. Dunya. Zainab from Nigeria. Usman Alim. Welcome, Usman. And Michelle is in the Netherlands, stuck there. Her father's in the UK with two Muslim sisters with him. Tina says, deeds and rewards is the answer to the riddle. The more you take of me, the more you leave behind. What am I? No, that's not the answer that I have. <clears throat> and Nobera says, her daughter's asking for the answer. All right, the answer to the riddle. The answer, okay, let's, let's do this. I'll tell you guys the answer to the riddle when five of you share this Facebook Live before we get started. So more people can share in the khair. So if you share then post share after five people share it then i will i will tell you guys what the answer to the riddle is shared shared <laughs> jahangir like a salam shared 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 okay forget it taking too long <laughs> let's get started Take one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ma wala amma ba'd. Good morning, Vietnam. Welcome to today's session. I wanted to tell you guys, well, the answer to the riddle is uh, the more you take of me, the more you leave behind. What am I? The answer is footsteps. The answer is Footsteps. The more you take of me, the more you leave behind. What am I? And answer is footsteps. <laughs> um, and, and before we begin as well, I wanted to remind you guys we're doing a, um, it's a mental health uh, summit. And we planned this before all of this took place. Uh, all of these fun things in 2020 took place. And because of what's happened in the past, like 10 days, two weeks, one month, we have changed the program so that every topic is focused directly on the mental health related to the situation that you're in now. So if you'd like to register for that, we have opened up registration. So anybody can, you can pay whatever you want for registration. So there's no, you wanna come for free, you wanna pay whatever you want, it's open. And the link is discover you, the letter U, dot online for the Time to Thrive Summit. So pay attention to that one. We got an amazing lineup of um, mental health experts that are going to be dealing with the topic of Time to Thrive. And we've been preparing for it for a while now. All right. So having said that, today we're talking, I'm actually going to talk about something related to mental health. <clears throat> so it's, it was a long time ago when I was a little kid. And, um, and somebody asked me this question. They said, what is your parents' phone number? What's your dad's phone number? What's your mom's phone number? And I said to them, I don't know. So they immediately assumed that I'm like the worst son in the world because I didn't know the number to my parents' phone number. Now, this is very common nowadays because everybody's got contact lists and nobody memorized the numbers. In fact, if you ask me, what is my number? What is my phone number? I might also tell you, I don't know because I don't keep it in my mind. I keep my mind blank. You know, those suitcases back in the day, maybe you still have these kind of suitcases where you try stuffing things into it, stuffing things into it, stuffing things into it. And then you have somebody sit on the suitcase and try to <coughs> push it down so that you can close it. Um, unfortunately, we try doing that with our brains. We try, and, and nowadays when we're at home and, and you'll hear people say things like, I have a lot on my plate. There's a lot on my mind. Now, I wanna help you with that here right now, inshallah ta'ala. The problem is the mind isn't the best location for storage. 
It's not a suitcase that you just stuff with information, phone numbers and this and that and, and um, this anxiety and future and past and, and present and everything's just going in your mind. In fact, if you ask about this is what I do when somebody's feeling overwhelmed, I'll tell them something like write 20 things that are on your mind right now. Write 20 things, write it down, 20 things that are on your mind right now and you'll find that this person might only be able to think of about seven things if they pushed it. So the overwhelm that they're feeling isn't necessarily that they've got a million things on their mind, even though they might say, I've got a million things on my mind. In fact, as it said, once you pass four things on your mind, your brain goes into overwhelm. So for example, if you're giving a speech, and I, and I tell this to Amalgam instructors, and people are giving chutpahs, I'm doing like chutpah training, I'll tell them that if you ever make a bullet list of, um, you know, you're giving a speech and you give a bullet list, one, two, three, four, I tell the sheikh, whoever's going to give the speech, once you pass three things, nobody will remember after that. They will get overwhelmed. And when asked afterwards about the chutbah or the speech, they will say, it was a good speech, mashallah, but I don't remember anything. Because the mind goes into overwhelm. People, so when I make my list, sometimes I just like to make it two things. And I'm like, good luck if you remember the two things. Two things, three things, that's it. Once it hits four or above, it goes into overwhelm. So if anybody gives a speech like, these are the 12 habits, or these are the seven things, or these are the 14 things, and as soon as it goes into those kind of numbers, we all know mine's gonna go into overwhelm. It sounds good, like it's a nice list, but nobody's gonna remember that because we got into overwhelm. So how do you deal with that? If your mind's going to overwhelm, you're at home, there's a lot of things on your mind, how do you get over that kind of overwhelm in your brain? I'm gonna give you three techniques on how to deal with it, inshallah ta'ala. Number one, the first um, technique is, um, so actually all of these are related to journaling. All of these are related to journaling. I've been a fan of journaling for like my whole life probably a good 20 years and I journal all the time and consistently in big moments in my life, big turning moments in my life, um, the journal always had something to do with it. And so I'm going to give you some techniques on how to use a journal to clear out your mind so that you can like just walk around smiling at your family members because there's nothing on your mind other than being present with the person in front of you knowing that, hey, whatever was on my mind is in its correct location. So the first technique that I would give you, actually, you know what, this isn't even in my list, but I'll share it with you anyway, is you open up a note on your phone and then you'll say something like, what are the top two things that I need to get done today? What are the top two things that I need to get done today? These top two things, if I get them done, I'm, I, it's been a productive day. It's been a productive day. I get these two things done, it's been a productive day, done deal. And then I have a list underneath that that says, if I have more time, here are some other things that I might wanna take care of. And I have another list underneath there, uh, appointments, if there's things that are time-based. So these top two things to get done each day, I just enter the day with like, what are the top two things I need to get done? What are the top, and I keep focusing on it. As uh, throughout the day you're saying, what should I work on? I keep going back to what are the top two things that I need to get done today? And then it may seem like I'm productive, even though some people say, hey Muhammad, you're pretty lazy. I get things done because I'm just focusing on the priority. So that's one way to get through, instead of having going through a list of 12 things, to-do list, and I have to do this, I have to do that, or the top two things that you need to get done. Next thing is when your mind goes into overwhelm, um, <coughs> when your mind goes into overwhelm, write it down in point form. So if you've ever been awake at night and your mind is just circling about what about the economy, what's gonna happen in the future, what, should, what about the rent, what about this, what about that, and your mind keeps going, you don't have to journal at that time. You don't have to journal, but what you can do is make a bullet list of everything that's on your mind. So you'll say, hey, I'm worried about the economy. Um, you know, tomorrow I have to wash the laundry. I have to, you know, uh, I have that workout that I need to be doing those, all those Instagram workouts that everybody talks about. Um, and then you keep doing that. You just make a list. Don't go into any detail about it. Um, just make the list 
and hey, try to get 20 things. You probably won't get 20 things, which is fine. That reassures you that you don't have a million things on your mind. You actually maybe have seven things or 12 things or whatever, but just make a point form list and then tell yourself, your mind, you don't even have to tell yourself, your mind will go to sleep after that because you're like, you know what, I've written it down, it is somewhere, I don't have to have it in my head, I can refer to this tomorrow when I need to, and you'll find yourself drifting to sleep. So that's one way to get the emotions out, get it off your mind, get it onto paper. The other thing that I'd recommend, another way of journaling is, um, <clears throat> 750 words there's actually websites about journaling 750 words every day if you really especially if you're in those um that time of your life or maybe it's like midlife crisis or there's a lot of emotions going on in your mind this is my right hand Um, <clears throat> when there's um, uh, a lot of emotions going through your mind, you can do this um, activity, 750 words. This is for a lot of the introverts, a lot of the people that are really in their head. Every day, write out 750 words. And this is freestyle. Um, <clears throat> this is freestyle writing where you're asking and answering questions. So I'll open my journal um, and, I, and I write on my, on my phone. I use the app Day One day one for journaling you can you can do it on any on notes but day one is nice and then i'll start saying to myself hey what's on your mind muhammad well these are three things that are on my mind i start writing it down and then and then i'll say well tell me more about it hey you know what this this i just have a series of asking back and forth back and forth back and forth i might write about 500 words and feel like, hey, that's it, I wanna stop. But I said, no, I'll push to 750. And 750, it gets past the shallow phase, just the tip of the iceberg stuff, and helps you get to the things that really matter. And you'll find it's just such a mental relief and such an emotional relief to get it out on paper. I'll give you some tips for those, for the 750 words. From my experience, it takes about eight, 18 minutes to write 750 words. And the other thing I would recommend with 750 words is to, um, you could also dictate it. So on your phone, you can just turn the microphone on and, and text dictate your, um, your journaling. So that, and, and it'll go faster. Then you can do it like in 11 minutes or something like that. 750 words every day. Another activity, a third one, this will be the final thing that I'd recommend for you guys, inshallah ta'ala. And that is, um, <clears throat> There are different journaling things where you're trying to find the root cause of something. Because if you deal with the root cause, you know, sometimes just knowing what the root cause, what's, what you're really afraid of, um, can resolve the issue. And, and if you don't know the root cause, then sometimes you're dealing with one thing, like maybe there's a, a family member, like a child that's screaming, and the issue isn't the child screaming, you've heard the child screaming before, the issue is maybe you're afraid for the future, for example, or you're afraid, something else. So if you just um, figure out what's really bothering you, it can help. So there are some activities that take you to the root problem, yeah? And then there are other activities that, um, not the root problem, but they follow your fears, so that you can see, hey, this le it doesn't lead to something that you're afraid of. So I wanna share the second example. Not you know how to get to the root cause, but rather um, how to go to, the next, uh, go to the next level. So this is the, the so what activity. So you write down something that you're afraid of. So I'm afraid that next month I won't be able to pay the rent. Then you put, you, you do this like five levels. You put, so what, then what will happen? Um, okay, so what will then will happen if I don't pay the rent, then, you know, landlord's going to send me um, a message saying, hey, you better pay the rent. Okay, great. So what? Then what will happen? Okay, if he sends me this message, I'll tell him, hey, you know what? I have a loss of income due to the coronavirus. Um, and, and that's what I'll, I'll respond. And, and then you say, okay, so what? Then what will happen? Then you say to yourself, okay, if I tell him that he's either gonna reject it or he might give me some facilitations, let's suppose he doesn't give me facilitation, okay, so what? Then what will happen? Then what will happen is he can't do anything about it because um, you know, this is the situation that I'm in. So what, then what will happen? Nothing, inshallah ta'ala, things will, you know, the sun will rise on another day, inshallah ta'ala, everything will work out and then I'll be able to pay my landlord back and pay my rent, done deal, yes? 
So, so what then will happen? You do it five levels. So when you're starting to feel a little anxious about something, so what? Then what will happen to five levels? And inshallah ta'ala, it'll move you out of just um, circling or looping around one scenario. And that's why it's so essential to get this down on paper, mental health wise. Get it out on paper, get it out of your brain. Your brain should always be like empty, just flowing. So that sometimes people come up to me and they go, you know what, Muhammad, I know you're really busy and you have a lot on your mind. And this is my response. I'm like, I'm not busy. I don't have anything on my mind, to be honest. To be honest, that's such a British thing. And why is there nothing on my mind? It's just like I said at the beginning here with the phone number, I don't memorize any phone numbers. I don't have anything on my mind. I don't join any WhatsApp groups. And I've been, a lot of people are getting offended by this, but I'm like, I don't want to be constantly, my mind entering a discussion every like 30 seconds, my mind entering a discussion, my mind, I'd like to keep my brain just free. And I would like to keep my emotions just free. So, I'm, so that when an opportunity comes where I do want to pay attention, or I do want to give some focus and I do want to give time to something. I have the time and I have the mental energy to do those things in Jalla Tana. All right, so I would like to give you guys a little task. You can do this in the text of the Facebook Live or if you'd like to write it on paper. Write down five to 10 things that are on your mind right now. Five to 10 things that are on your mind right now and let's see how it feels after you get that down. So what are five to 10 things that are on your mind right now? You can write it in the, in the text here or if you'd like to write it in your notes. Let's take like one minute or two minutes to do it. Write down five to 10 things that are on your mind right now. I will do it as well. How about that? I'll do my own. Five to ten things are on my mind right now. First thing is the Time to Thrive Summit. I've got a lecture that I'm going to be doing. Five to ten things that are on your mind right now. You know what the problem is? If you only listen to lectures, I know there's a lot of Facebook lies. Everybody's doing stuff these days. But if you're just listening, it goes out one year, comes out. Some stuff sticks. Most of it doesn't. But you're going to benefit more when you do the activity. And you'll feel it. You'll feel it from the activities. So five to 10 things um, that are on your mind right now. Five to 10 things that are on your mind right now. Write it down and then see how you feel after you've written it down. What's interesting is if you can get five to 10 things, if you get like three things or four things, and you're like, look, I can't even get to 10, good for you. Then you know that you benefited because you think you're overwhelmed, but you can't even think of 10 things. All right, great, if you did the activity, how was it? You've written it down, now how do you feel? How do you feel compared to this was in your head versus written down? I'd like to hear your feedback on that. How does it feel having this in your head versus having it written down? Aisha says I got three, push it to seven. Patricia says, I still feel overwhelmed. Keep writing then, per Patricia. If you've got only like five things. <laughs> and Aisha says, made me feel like I'm worried about crayons. Rahila says, I'm thinking about it now more because it's out there. And if it's out there, Rahila, you know, like they say about gas, better out than in. If you're keeping all that toxic gas in your body, it'll mess you up inside. Okay, some people are saying lighter. Zahra is saying she feels relaxed. I'm happy that I wrote it down. Now I can deal with it. Like not deal with it, but I'm like, 
you know, you don't even have to deal with it. You're just like, hey, it's written down. And as Matt says, I feel this is not as much as I thought. Alhamdulillah. Great. That's what I wanted you to experience. And you wouldn't have experienced this if you had just heard me and then I ended this Facebook Live and we'd be like, khalas. And Yamama says, my problems are not as bad since it's all house stuff. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And Mi'raj saying, none of it is in my control. Really, I have this habit of doing my best. It's pure Allah's will, the results. And Alhamdulillah, that's also, if you write things down that are not in your control, that's another thing to pay attention to, by the way. If you've written things down, did you write things down that are in your control? Or did you write things down that are out of your control? And if they're out of your control, they're not, then why are they on your list? All right, folks, that's it for today's Facebook Live. Jazakallah khairan. The Time to Thrive Summit is about mental health. Everybody that we're bringing on this thing, we've brought them from before. This is an event that we have switched up, so it deals with all the issues um, that we're dealing with now. we got Sister Dali Mujahid, myself, Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim, um, Sister Mina, uh, there's uh, uh, Brother Walid, Sheikh Walid. We've got Sheikh Mikail and... and um, Amazing sister presenters as well, inshallah ta'ala. Each topic is going to be dealing with mental health related to the situation that we're in. And inshallah ta'ala, I'd love for you to attend. This is, we've opened it up. So even though the ticket prices were so low, you can pay whatever you want to attend it. You can pay whatever you want to attend to buy your tickets for whatever price. It doesn't matter. We'd love to have you come, inshallah ta'ala, and let's benefit. The link is discover you dot online discover i will type it for you okay discover you this is annoying um there we go and we are done, folks. Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ilaha ilaha ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Thank you, Zahra. I really needed this talk today as my brain was overwhelmed. I wanted to tell you, Zahra, and everybody, I actually, because I'm preparing my speech for the Time to Thrive Summit, this is from my content. So if you're feeling um, like a little mentally relaxed in just these five minutes, ten minutes, then inshallah ta'ala, I got a lot of amazing stuff for you. In, and that's just my topic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.